uh, I'm going to tell you about a patient that I saw in the ER at my hospital. Now, when most people think about the ER, uh, they think about blood and guts and George Clooney. And uh, the reality is uh, usually less dramatic and often uh, less attractive. Um, it looks more like this. Um, the patient I'm going to tell you about is a young woman with abdominal pain. Uh, she was like a lot of patients that you just need to see and move through after you've made a decision on. And when the resident told me about her, he said, 29, female, abdominal pain, vomiting for six weeks, needs a CAT scan. And all of that seemed like a very reasonable thing to do. Um, and even when I play this case back in my, in my head, all of that seemed extremely reasonable. Um, the uh, data collection was done properly, the exam was done properly, the medical reasoning was done properly. And despite all of that being entirely correct, we were about to make an enormous mistake. Now to understand the mistake that we were about to make, I want to take you back um, probably about 50 years to what was a simpler time in medicine. It was a time when penicillin was a fairly new drug. Uh, we certainly didn't have a lot of um, axial scanning and um, we wore these uh, really funny flashlights on our foreheads, which um, I've always wanted to get for myself, but I'm afraid I wouldn't be taken seriously. Um, when uh, a similar patient would have walked into this man's office, the disturbing thing that I realized is that that mistake that we were about to make would probably not have happened. What would have happened is she would have sat down. He would have spent a really long time talking to her, like almost 10 or 15 minutes, which in my world is an eternity. And uh, there's, a, there's a fairly good chance that this doctor would have actually gotten to the bottom of the problem uh, in a way that, that almost escaped us. The bottom of the problem for this particular patient was actually not her abdominal pain or vomiting or anything. It was that six weeks before, around the time she'd started vomiting, she discovered that her boyfriend was sexually abusing her daughter. Our mistake would have been doing a CT scan, seeing that it was negative, and then sending her home without compassion, without resources to help her or her daughter, um, and without closing the loop on this social issue that we only could have gotten to the bottom to if we'd actually talked to her. That's really hard when you only have three minutes to spend with a patient, 40% of which is spent interacting with a computer. Now, um, it's easy to see how a lot of doctors would look at this situation and say, let's get rid of the computers. Let's go back to that simpler time and throw out all of this CAT scan and uh, EMR stuff and move backwards. But we need to actually move forwards. Computers got us into this mess and computers can also get us out of this mess, but only if we do it properly. So I wanna play it forward and imagine what would have happened to this patient if she had come into an ER 50 years from now. She would have checked into a triage desk where we would have immediately started monitoring her vital signs and maybe even her emotional state. A algorithm would have already sifted through all of her medical records and told the resident that based on her two prior abdominal imaging studies, her probability of having appendicitis or ovarian torsion or ectopic pregnancy was very low. If the resident had not asked her about mood or anxiety or social issues, it would have prompted him to do so. And there certainly wouldn't have been time taken with the resident writing on a computer while he was trying to talk to the patient. So all of these technologies are here and ready to be incorporated into the doctor-patient relationship. Technologies that will collect data that actually humanize us and acknowledge the complexity of the body and the mind and technology to help us understand this data in an analytic way. So in a funny way, incorporating computers into medicine is actually going to make medicine more human, not less. Thank you.